going to show you how to make the Shih Tzu pooch pouch from Creative Kiwi and for that I'm going to be using a 5x7 hoop, wash away stabiliser, some pins to, to tension my stabiliser in the hoop, some masking tape, my squizzers, a double curved scissors, a selection of threads, my vinyl cut to size and um, I've got a piece of fabric here as well for the bow and some felt for the tongue and I've got some cam snaps for the closer. So we're going to start off by hooping our wash away stabiliser and I've got mine doubled over so I'm going to place that over the outer hoop and then the inner hoop on top and I'm just going to push that down and so that it stays nice and tight in the hoop I'm going to put some pins around the top edge of my hoop here and that will stop the stabiliser from being pulled down during stitching and you can use any pins for this I've got some T pins here but you can use absolutely any that you've got to hand and you push them through and then bring them back round and the pin sits on top of the hoop there and it acts as an anchor and the bigger the the hoop you've got obviously the you can put more pins in around the edge just make sure that your hoop your inner hoop sits nice and flush with the outer hoop flat onto the table Okay, you're now going to load file number one into your machine and you're going to stitch round number one and that's going to give you your placement outlines for the back of the head, your tab and the tongue. Take your fabric that you're going to use for the tongue and you want a non-fraying fabric such as felt for this and place it over the bottom outline and then tape it in place to hold it during stitching. You can now pop that back into your machine and stitch round number two and that's going to secure the fabric and it's going to provide you with your cutting line in a little while um, for the shape of the tongue. You're now going to place your strap fabric and if you're going to be um, using the same colour for the head as well, the back of the head, you can do it, you can place it all down in one, um, one piece as I'm going to here and then you can just tape it in, in place there and then you're going to pop that into your machine and stitch round number three and that's going to do the outline um, and stitch down of the strap. You're now going to stitch round number four and that's going to stitch down the fabric for the back of the head and also give you your ear placement as well. Place your ear fabric, or should I say vinyl, over the outline of both ears and then tape it in place. And then pop your hoop back into your machine and stitch round number five to secure them. You're now going to trim up around the stitch line of each of the ears. I appreciate that it's very difficult to see um, at the moment but you will see in a minute once I get going now going to pop your hoop back into your machine and stitch round number six and that's going to give you a placement line for the top knot you can now place your vinyl over the outline and tape it in place. Pop it into your machine and stitch round number seven. 
You're now going to trim up all around the edge of the stitch line. You can now pop that back into your machine and stitch round to number eight and that's going to put all the hair detail into the design. I've removed all the pins from around the edge of my hoop and we can now remove this from the frame and we're going to cut these pieces out so I've got my fabric scissors and first off I'm just going to separate them into three pieces and then you're going to cut along the outside line Do the same for the tongue. The stabilizer is going to come off there, so that's fine. And that's our tongue piece cut out. And now we're going to cut the back of the head out. And again, following the outside line. It's important to be quite accurate because this is going to give you your placement when we come to join all the pieces together. And then just tidy up all the little threadies from the cut line. And that gives you your first three pieces. You will now want to load file number two into your machine and then you're going to hoop your stabilizer exactly the same way as you did for the first piece and you're now going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number one and that's going to give you your um, vinyl placement outline. Place your vinyl over the outline and just pop some tape down to hold it in place. You're now going to stitch round number two and that's going to stitch this down and it's also going to give you the placement for the tail. Place your tail uh, vinyl over the outline here and just secure it in place with a little bit of tape. And if you're new to machine embroidery, we, we like to use tape rather than pins to stop things moving about because if you get pinning wrong, you can do a lot of damage to your machine. You're now going to pop that back into your machine and stitch round number three and that's going to secure the vinyl in place. You're now going to trim up the excess vinyl from around the stitch line. You can now pop that back into your machine and stitch round number four and that's going to put in all the hair detail as it did for the first piece. You can now free this from the hoop. I've removed the pins already. And we're now going to cut around the outer stitch line. And 
that's our butt completed. You want to load file number 3 into your machine and you're going to hoop your wash away stabiliser as before and you're going to stitch round number 1 and that's going to give you your placement outline. Do you ever find the back of your work a little bit messy sometimes with all the knots? If you do I'm going to show you an easy way to avoid them and what you want to do is pull your thread so that you've got a long tail and then put your foot down and you're just going to turn um, the first stitch with the dial on the side of your machine as if you would a sewing machine until it comes up then you can lift the foot pull on your thread end and that should pull up your under thread like so so give yourself a two nice long tails put your foot back down and you can now stitch the first few stitches to anchor it trim the tails off and now you won't have an ugly knot on the back of your work I'm going to show you the back of the hoop here and there's my tie in and tie off it's not as bulky as it normally would be when you've got two knots directly one on top of the other you're still going to have a little knot but they can't be avoided You're now going to place your fabric, should I say vinyl, over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop back into your machine and stitch round number two and that's going to secure your vinyl and also give you the placement for the ears, the top knot and the tail. You're going to place your vinyl over the tail area here and then tape it in place. Pop it into your machine and stitch round number three to secure it. And you can now trim away all the excess. You're now going to place your fabric for the ears over the outline and tape it in place. You're now going to put your hoop into your machine and stitch round number four to secure it. You're now going to trim away all the excess. Now I warn you now that there are a few tight pieces in here but just take your time they're perfectly doable. And next you're going to put some vinyl over this area here and that's the top knot and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number five. And you're now going to trim up the excess. Now going to pop your hoop back into your machine and stitch round number six and that's going to do all the hair detail on the front of your dog. You're 
you're now going to place your fabric for the bow over here and I, I really do advise using a non-fray fabric because there is no satin stitch to stop any frayed edges from poking out so I've got some nice silver here and I'm going to take that down I've loaded some silver thread into my machine and you might want to change yours so that it either contrasts or matches your fabric and then you're going to stitch round number seven and that's going to secure it you can then remove the tape and trim up the excess fabric you're going to want to load white thread into your machine now because next you're going to stitch round number eight and that's going to do the whites of the eyes you're now going to want to change your thread to black and you're going to stitch round number nine and that's going to do the eyes and the nose we're now going to attach the tongue and this here um, this area here is going to be cut open afterwards to allow the tongue to come through so it might look like a chin but it's not actually a chin it's the mouth so we're going to turn our hoop over and I've drawn the line in in black pen here so that you can see what I'm doing you're going to take your tongue and with the tip of the tongue facing the top of the head you're going to place it over the line but you want to keep the edges clear and then with a little bit of tape just hold it in place just make sure you keep those edges clear you're now going to pop that back into your machine and stitch round number 10 to secure it you're going to turn your hoop over and remove the tape from the bottom part of the tongue I had to put some bigger tape on because it just wasn't big enough to hold it and you're going to trim up the excess around this stitch line like that now this tape here I'm just going to cut that in half because I don't want it so um, long and then I'm just going to put that back down next you're going to attach your tab so that's going to go at the top here and you want that to straddle the two top stitch lines and then tape it in place and I'm placing mine face down it's up to you whether you place it face down face up it depends which way you want it to fasten when it's finished I, I'm placing mine face down personally I prefer it that way and you're going to tape that in place as well and a little bit of tape there to hold that down as well you're now going to pop that no you're not going to pop that back into your machine first of all you're going to attach the back of the head and we're going to place that over the outline and you want this stitch line here around the edge to match up with the inner stitch line there and the more um, time and care you take over doing it um, the better your finished result because if you if you don't get it on accurately you're going to get a double line of stitch in there that's going to show you also want to use a matching bobbin with your thread as well because that makes it look nice and neat then we're going to tape that in place don't worry about the um, stitching going through the tape um, it's not going to make any difference so it doesn't matter if you um, uh, get it in the in the way of the stitch line because we're going to remove it after anyway and I'm just going to put a little bit at the top here as well because I want it nice and securely fastened then you're going to pop that back into your machine and stitch round number 11 and that's going to attach these two pieces down I've removed nearly all the tape 
I'm going to give you a tip when you remove tape that's been stitched through. Always tear towards the stitching rather than away and that way it should just perforate neatly along the stitch line without damaging your stitching. I'm leaving the top piece of tape here so that it holds this out of the way. We're now going to attach the butt and once again you want to make sure that this line here lines up neatly with the second line here otherwise you're going to have double stitching and then tape it in place and you're going to pop this into your machine and stitch around number 12 and that's going to secure it around the edge here we can now remove this from the hoop so I've removed all the pins and the tape and I want to show you something I mentioned about a double line if you don't get it quite lined up that's what you get I just didn't take the time to do it accurately okay so next we're going to reach up inside bearing in mind that the tongue stuck down with a bit of tape and we're going to pull the tongue and the tape downwards and then remove the tape and I'm just going to tuck that down because next we're going to cut the hole out for the tongue so by, you could, uh, by holding your finger up inside you can actually feel where your tongue is and what you're doing so I've got my finger up inside and I'm now going to cut around the stitch line here and be careful that you don't end up piercing your finger of course and you don't want to cut your, your, your stitch line here because that's what holds the tongue in place okay just going to remove that little bit of stabilizer there and then you can poke the tongue through the hole now the tongue is long so if you find that it's too long for your liking you can just trim it off what I would do is just take a coin and use a um, chalk pen and then just tr then just round it off okay next we're going to cut this out and once more we're going to cut all the way around on the outside stitch line now you do have to be careful though not to cut your tab off trust me I've done it so I've found that the best way is to trim that area first that way you can see exactly what you're doing and you don't get carried away and forget about it so I've got my finger behind my tab there and I'm just going to go down and trim up along that line already done on the back so we don't have to worry about that so now I can just take my bigger scissors and go around the outline and it's well worth taking your time and doing it neatly Next you're going to attach your cam snaps and you're going to need two sets one for the tab and one to hold the butt closed and I think we'll start with the butt I've got a sharp stubby tool here it's actually a, a clay uh, modeling sculpting tool so 
but it works really really well it's one of my can't live without tools so you're going to place that in the center of um, the circle here which is the marker for your um, snap and then you'll, you'll see underneath if you push it right down and then I'm going to take a pen and just mark where the tool has stabbed in and now I can remove that and just mark that so you can see what I'm doing now uh, if you've never used these snaps before you've got three pieces to them you've got the I call it the sharp pointy bit but I suppose it's like a button really and then you've got a male and the flatter female part so you're going to need um, a button for each piece so one for the male and one for the female and it doesn't matter what order you do it in but um, we're going to make our hole take one of the button pieces and the the spike of it push through then you're going to seat either the male or the female on the back of it and then you're going to take the tool and the the cut piece is what the button sits in whoops and then place that over the uh, snaps completely and the button fits in the black piece and the other part fits inside uh, the clear part there and then you just squeeze really hard and that is now fixed you're going to do the same with this so we're going to pierce a hole where the blue dot is and this time you want the spike of it coming up from the back and place the female or the opposite piece to the first one that you used fit it round the tool round the snap and squeeze and your snap is now fixed so next we're going to do the same for the strap and I'm going to try and get that line there to line up with the first line of the stitching and of course I'd like it so that actually I'm going to have it just back from the stitch and I think it'll look better there let me know what you think and then I'm going to push that through here and just mark this so that you can see what I'm doing it'll be a lot easier for you so there's where I've stabbed I push that through I can now lift this and mark underneath for the second part once again I'm going to push the spike through now looking at it from the front I've got the um, spike going through from the front towards the back I'm going to place the male or female whatever one comes to hand first over the top and squeeze and that's that piece fixed and I'm going to want the second piece so I'm going to pierce here and again I'm going to have the button on the front through to the back and then place the female or should I say the opposite one to what you've already used over the top and secure it in place and there it is our snaps in place so now all that remains I've got a roll of bags 
pop that inside and poke this up through here pull it out and that's your dispenser finished I hope you enjoyed this stitch along if you did please give me a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to be notified of new videos as they're published do pop along to Creative Kiwi's Facebook group. There's lots of ideas and inspiration there for everybody. And thank you very much for joining me.